Thank you, Son of God. We worship you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Son of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I am Jesus. I am Jesus. I am Jesus. I am Jesus, your Lord. I am Jesus the son of the living God. I am Jesus. 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 I am the brightness of my father's glory, the express image of his person. I am Jesus. I am Jesus. I am Jesus, the Lord. I am Jesus, the son of the living God. I am Jesus. Why I am on a prayer to Vantania. I'm on the increase to fall in a gym located in a Jesus. I am Jesus. I am Jesus. I'm here. I am Jesus. I, 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 I am here. I am here. Even your Porina Shetania. I am here. I am Jesus. For your worship, for your worship, for your worship, for your worship, I've ascended to the nostril of my Father like an incense, like an incense. I am Jesus. I am sent from my Father to grant you entrance, to grant you entrance, to grant you entrance. Even as a worship has arisen as an incense unto my Father, also I cause that your soul, your soul to ascend. I hear the Lord say, Ascension, Ascension, Ascension. Ascension, ascension, ascension. Yes, I will cause you to ascend. I am causing many to ascend again, again. Ascension. I come to take. I come to take. I come to take. I come to grant open door for many to be taken. For many to be taken. Yes, I come for open door. I bring open door. I bring open door for ascension. For your mind we ascend, for your heart we ascend. Even as the worshippers ascend to my Father, also I bring ascension, ascension of understanding. Yes, understanding. For many will be taken from the earth. For many will be taken from the earth. I bring open door for ascension, ascension to higher heavens. See the Spirit of God. Thank you. God. Oh, thank you, Son of God. I come before you this day with meekness, Lord in the heart, acknowledging you, the living oracle. 
We are the living oracle, son of God. Thank you, eternal oracle. I thank you. I thank you for the gift of Christ, the Messiah. You will sh shall not. Wait for thou shall remain and abide forever. And you will tell us. You are the one that tells us all things. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for grace. Thank you for help. Thank you for increase. I come to you, my Father. I come to you, my Father. Jesus, you are my Father. I come to you, Jesus, my Father. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon us. But with you, a multitude of mercy. Your bowel is full of mercy. And your bowel is full of compassion. For you are having your loving kindness and your tender mercies, which are upon all the works of your hands. Receive mercy, Jesus. <laughs> I receive mercy upon you, my Father. We receive mercy. We receive mercy. Thank you, Son of God. Thank you, Lord. As for grace for this afternoon again, that you will help us. You will help me. Acknowledge that except you shine your face. You grieve the grace from your face. I ask that you will be so tender and bring us into life. Usher us into life. Cause us to find help from you, Lord. I receive favor not just from you, Jesus. I also ask for favor from your sons and your daughters. That you will grant me favor. That they will receive the word. They will not struggle or contend with the word. I ask that you cause me to find favor in their sight. Cause your word to come out with ease and with grace. Cause your word to find a place of resting in the heart. That you will cause question, doubt, unbelief. You will help out. And you will grant me mercy, Lord. And grant everyone mercy. Thank you because I align under you, the great shepherd of the flock. And the great sheep. And under the anointing over this work, even over your servant or your handmaiden, that you will distill and bring forth great help in the spirit. Thank you, son of God. We give ourselves to the Spirit and we just follow your leading. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. Let the God say a big amen. amen. I say you should say a big amen. amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Let me appreciate the worship team. Thank you so much, Sister Allah, and all the crew. Thank you and thank you so much. Uh,
Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. Thank O Jabafe si kosa pafa jo presi valeta na hasuno se kapete vaneka na zane. Maete shi aziva stomi ate shi pia stofe stine ke stavreno dalava dasen. E pakato shkavita mare tezavu siolo baratale kazaev leni etane kal stobe stin ko. Anevrate stia stin ko. Maliki aste stia via stin sensi ko stin ko. E abo ste zi ate parono se fakastia se ten ko. There is a ko. A ko. Yeah, a call, a call, a gathering, a gathering, a gathering, a gathering. You have been called to a gathering. You have been called to a gathering. You have been called even to a gathering. You have been called to a gathering. A gathering for writings. A gathering for inscription. A gathering for tattooing. A gathering. Even a gathering for embossing. Even a gathering. Ga 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 gathering. A gathering for stamping. A gathering for stamping. A gathering for writings, for we are to write on you. I am to write upon you. I am to write upon you. You are to be written upon. You are to be written out of a season and written even into a new season. For a new call, even a call over you. There's a call, even a call upward. Even a call upward. Even a call upward. A call upward. A call upward. A call upward. Have ears to hear the call. Have ears to hear the call. To hear, 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 hear the call. Have ears to hear the call. Even the call upwards. Bring in you ears. Ears to hear the call. I'm gathering saints together. Even they that have made covenant with me by sacrifice. Even 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 by living sacrifice. Even by living sacrifice, living sacrifice, rise to offer up these living sacrifices that you may gather even around this holy congregation, even to this holy congregation. There is a call in the spirit, a call in the spirit. He that has an ear, let him hear, let him hear. A call! You are being gathered, you are being gathered, you are being gathered even to a new season of writing, a new season of light, even a new season of eternal writing. Eternal rights, eternal rights, eternal writings, eternal writings, even for this new season, says the Spirit of God. Amen. Lord, we just thank you for that new season of our ups. We appreciate you, our Father. May the Lord be praised in the name of Jesus. Ah. Uh, and we just wanted to lift up our right hand and just give God thanks for this new season. I just give him time. Let's just wave to the Lord. Let's wave to the Lord. And also let's thank the Lord for God's servants. Our appearing to the Lord, Reverend Kayo, the Hallelujah. Okay? Let's thank God for them, for the blessing the Lord has made for them. Let's thank God for the Lord raising them as a vessel of honor. Thank you, Lord. Let's say, let's thank God for the Lord making them vessel of honor. Lord, we thank you for making them vessel of honor, not just the honor of sanctification, but even the greater honor, the honor to bear glory. Thank you, our Father. Uh, let's thank God for Pastor Maker. Let's lift our hand and just thank God for him and his Pastor Lilia. Let's thank God for him, for them. Let's thank for the mercy that we have to find for God raising his servant. Let's thank him. Let's thank you, Pastor Tayo. Uh, Father Tayo of Aston, let's thank God for him and his wife. Thank God for that grace. We thank God for raising him at such a time as this. Let's thank God for Pastor Moses and his wife, Vietnam Cafe. Let's thank God for them. Lord, we just thank you. Let's do the same for Pastor Kenneth. Let's just thank God for them all. Oh, we thank you, my Father, for blessing. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And also, Let's thank God for all our pastors, starting from Pastor Tope, Pastor Ayo, Pastor TJ, Pastor Yola, Pastor Laide. Let's thank God for them, Pastor Michael Luwale, Pastor Kola Day. Let's thank God for them. 
Let's start. I don't like you. are not thanking God. I said you should thank God. Not you should, you should not. I didn't say you should murmur. I said you should thank God. Let's thank him. Lifting up your right hand and thanking him. Let's thank Jesus for them. Let's thank him. Jesus is here. He says he's here. So we are acknowledging and thanking him. Hallelujah. Let's thank God for Pilike. Let's thank God for him and all our other pastors in Gaidite, all of them. Let's thank the Lord for them. Thank you, Lord. Let's thank God for Pastor Clay, all our mommies and daddy in the house, all our sisters. Let's thank God for them. Let's thank Jesus for all of them. We give you praise, our Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, yeah, little girl, I also thank God for yourself. Thank the Lord for yourself. He has helped you to obey God, to respond to the prompting of the Spirit. Thank God you have shown you mercy. He has given you grace. God has shown you what you deserve. Often God has come with you with so much mercy and grace. Let's thank him for that mercy. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Uh, I just want to thank the Lord for our parents and all our pastor. Uh, Daddy wants to say we love you. Our mommy will love you. Uh, we are missing you already. We are just loaning you for a short lease. Uh, we are expecting you back and we are going to receive you back with joy in our heart. I know the brethren in UK, Daddy Lame Kara, let's thank God for that other Kara and Mami Informa too. We love you, Daddy, but we are still going to have God's servant driven back to Nigeria very soon. Yes. But we love you. Let's appreciate God for Daddy Lame Kara and Mami Informa. Thank you, Jesus, for your regiment, your servant. We thank you and for your handmaiden. We honor you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are pray. Uh, Good morning, everybody. Pastor, good morning, sir. Good morning, ma. And all the pastor, morning, sir. And our mommies and daddy, good morning. And the pastor, good morning. Amen. Uh, I don't know what to do because the tongue was saying eternal. I wanted to just stay in everlasting. I don't know if I'm disobeying God if I stay in everlasting. Amen. Amen. Uh, but in the course of prayer, uh, there was a scripture that, that you know, uh, as worship was going on, which was that uh, the John chapter 4, there's what Christ, the Messiah, does. Why learning Christ is very, very important. The woman said, I perceive that thou art a prophet. And because you're a prophet, you should be able to answer this question. They say that when Christ, that's John 14, John 4. Please, can you quickly give it to me? Uh, let me just start with there and see if I can connect my thought. The woman said unto me, Sir, that's John 4, 19. Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Can not give it 20? Okay, sorry. Uh, but that should be... Maybe I don't want to I don't want to take too long on that. That should be okay, twenty twenty-five. Just give me twenty-five. The woman said unto me, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come. He will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speaketh unto thee, I am he. So we know that one of the important ministry of the estate of Christ is so that all things can be made manifest. Starting from all things that be of Christ, because Christ is also things, and all things that be of the Father, and all things that be of God. Until 
Christ has come. That was come there. It's not just talking about physical coming of Jesus. You remember in the book of First John, the activity of Christ, the activity of Antichrist, is that whatsoever denied that Christ is come, not that Christ had come, that Christ is come. Because that is one of the assaults of the Antichrist and the tatties of the wicked one is that Christ should not come. When I say Christ should not come, is there should never be the appearing, the unveiling of Christ. The unveiling of Christ is him coming. Is him coming to us is for us to is to reveal him. And I say that Christ, when the, uh, Christ is come. So first John 4 3 says, and every spirit, that was every spirit, you can see every spirit here, that is what they have charged evil spirits. Satan have given every spirit. Every spirit that are fallen spirit, they have a mission. Every mission of unclean spirit and evil spirit is now that they should make people to deny that Christ is come. It's not that by talking that Christ is come, Christ is come, Christ is not come, no. Because you remember, the Joker was casting out evil spirits. One of the devils said, ah, you are Jesus. The son of God. Have you come to judge me before my time? So it's not about the talking. It's to come in the flesh. There was a Christ coming in the flesh. Christ coming in the flesh is two-way or is two-fold. The first fold is that a man in the day of his flesh should never come into a place of comprehending everything that is Christ. Comprehension. When I'm talking about comprehension, yeah, I'm talking, I'm not just talking about having, when teaching is coming, coming to it, understanding it. Comprehension, the note I'm talking about is the, the eating man, your eating man, fellowshipping with the reality. Because our soul is a spiritual topography. In our soul, you have land in your soul. There's a part of your soul, you have sea, it's in your soul. And part of your soul, you have heaven in your soul. The heaven in your soul is called the temple of God. That's 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. It's, there's a temple of God in every man. And it's in the heaven, it's situated. Isn't it? That's where, why, where the, the man of sin wants to enter. So the soul, everything you see physically created, you know, God Sabbath was teaching one of these New Testament times, they talk, I say, Ma, Adam was brought out of the ground. So then when they talk about ground, it's not talking about, there's a realm they brought him from. Then that ground they brought him for, as earth, as sea, and as is heaven. And it's what well, they brought, and from that ground, I would say, and everything that God formed from them from ground in Genesis 3, the cattle, the beast, of it was also formed from the ground. So the ground that they're talking about was there, was from an invisible realm of the earth that they brought, they fetched that is a grand. And you know the church also has its grand too. We church, we also have our grand too. The church also has its grand. You say, this thing I, I write to you, Timothy, that you may know how to behave yourself in the church of the living God. So the church of the living God. So the grand of, of, of the church is the grand of the living God, everlasting. There's a grand, there's an everlasting grand. The church, which is called the church of the living God, which is the grand and the pillar of truth. So that grand is the realm of everlasting. So church is not ecle. And church should never settle until he has fully arrived in his grand. They have to lead us from lower, for that to lead us from Mary Clay and lead us to higher ground. That's where the church, that is where corruption can no longer lead the church. That's when the gate of air cannot prevail against the church. 
So long as this church remains on lower ground, they don't burn us to that place, but they, they take us and lead us and take us to the, 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 what they call the church of the living God. The church of the living God, which is the ground, and their place, there's also a pillar there. So in, in, in everlasting, in, in, what, in what? In the, in the realm of the living God, or everlasting life, there's a ground and there's a pillar that, they, that must hold the church. It's a ground. It, they, that's ground and the pillar, the church of the living God. It, it's exactly what was talking in the book of Hebrew, chapter 12. He called it the church of the firstborn. And you find that the ground of that church of the firstborn is on Mount Zion. Hallelujah, church, somebody. Thank you, breath of God. Thank you, spirit of life. Thank you, Lord. So the church must be planted. So the ground for the church is that everybody must arrive on Mount Zion. Because Mount Zion is our land of nativity. He said in the book of Psalms, he said, for this shall be said that this one is born of Ah. For this shall be said is born of what? Ethiopia, of Egypt. But it shall be said of this, that this one is born of Ah. I will make Psalm 87 verse 4. I hope, I, I hope we are ready to do this exercise this morning. Yes, Amen. Amen. Don't worry, I will try and step down later. Let's start from there and trust God. Because it's the tongue. We're just trying to flow. And trust God for flow of the Spirit. I will make mention of Rahab and Babylon to them that know me. <laughs> to them that know me. Behold, Philistine and Ty with Ethiopia, this man was born there. This is also Malachi 3. For it shall come to pass in that day that I will put difference. Because they that fear the Lord have said to one another that we keep ourselves in vain. There's no difference between them that serve God and them that do not serve God. But he said that I will make mention of them that know me. Those that know me are them that have the book of remembrance of me before them. They know me. To know me means that they have done my will. Matthew chapter 7. For many shall come to me in that day and will say, in your name we cast out devils. We prophesy in your name. And we did many miracles in your name. Or many mighty works or wonderful works in your name. Then I will tell them, I know you not. So, so he's talking about them that know me. They that know me, likewise also, in 1 Timothy, he was saying, he said, for the foundation of the Lord, stand there sure. Everybody say that, church. That's 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy. Nevertheless, the foundation of God, stand there sure. There's a foundation. Before God will say, he has a foundation, or he has the grant in a person, there must be a knowing. That is where God, where God set the work in a man. That knowing, that knowing was there must have been that union, exchange of God's life in a measure is there. It's a foundation that God stands. The foundation of God stands that sure. Having this seed, the Lord knoweth them that are his. So God said, I never knew you. So, so God can know you if you are not know him. So in that book of that psalm, you're saying that, for I will say today that I know me. I will make mention to them that know me. So these people are people that have gained some level of judgment and understanding of him. Because, because they feel that there's no difference. Just like people look at us and say, you say Christ, Christ, Christ. Where's the Christ? I can't see any Christ, you know? It was like that. Jesus, if you remove the miracle of Jesus from Jesus, many people could not design who Jesus was. He looked like everybody, like every young man, if I, they felt that it was just another zealotist. He said, I will, make, I will mention of Rehab, Babylon, to them that know me. So there's them that know me. Them that know me are men that have obeyed what? The knowledge that know me. They have come to place of knowledge of the Lord. Because you can't know him without his knowledge. 
It is through knowledge that we know him. And but knowledge does not just to go from the knowledge. Knowledge we go and move into your eating paths. The place where we know God is our eating path. Say that church. Amen. Psalm 50. That's the that truth in the inward parts. But you make me to know the that we make to, to know wisdom in my eating part. So yeah, my inward, so the soul has inward parts. But there is a place called eating part. The Lord, the Lord painted to God said, the eating part is my temple. Is what is where is my temple? Who was the pastor? Michael was teaching last week. He called that place called the, the sanctuary. Like what, like what David said. He said, I, I was become envious of the people of the earth. Because I said, I, I, I've, I've chastened myself in vain. What, all this chastening, all this rebooking, all this scourging. There, yeah, there's, no, there's no reward behind it. All this following love and charity. Everything that you say I'm heavenly. There's nothing heavenly about me. I've done charity. <laughs> what is there's nothing heavenly about you. So I was envious at the foolish. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked, prosperity there is not only money, it's not talking about money. That means prosperity of the wicked means they prosper everything they are at these vices. Everything they are at want, they have it. They never, they never restrain them. They never have what they call subjectively restrained upon their life. They ne there's, no, there's no constraint. There's no holding them back. Every thought of their heart, they're able to go at it, they're able to execute it, drive it from A to conclusion. They don't check it. They have never come under chastening. They have never come under holding them down for a while. So, can you please move on? Please. Okay. For there is no bond in their dead, but, and their strength is firm, uh, and they are not troubled as other men. Neither are they plagued like every other man. Until I went into the sanctuary of God. So, so the sanctuary of God there is not only place. It's not. It's the sanctuary of God. It's the sanctuary of God. God has his sanctuary. Then in his sanctuary, then I understood the sanctuary of God. So the sanctuary of God told me the last sanctuary of God called is the temple of God. Is the is in that place you know as you are known. When you gather knowledge, it, it can move through your inward part, but the essence of it is that you must enter your hidden part so you can know. Just like every couple, they go into the hymn for them to know each other. It's in the place of the hymn. Eden part is the place of the aim. For knowing, it's not just mental knowledge, it is an experience. That's where you hold to the reality. And that does not take place until a man has half his world, but by reason of his world, he has kept the world. If you are not a keeper to have the world, he said in the book of John chapter 14, if you have my commandment and you keep it, you keep them. So you can have the commandment, you are able to keep them. To keep is not obeying. To keep is to pay attention to it. Is to be, is for, is for you to dwell in you, keeping it. You remember Mary, after Mary, Came looking for Jesus and said, Son, ah, your father, I went sorrowing for four, four days. He said, Why are you looking for, for me? Don't you know I will be after, after my father's business? And the Bible said, His Mary kept those things in her heart. So, so you must keep his sayings. If you don't keep, you can't obey. What did I say, church? <laughs> Keeping come before obeying. To keep is to dwell on it. To keep is for, is for to meditate on it. That's keeping. 
is to, is to keep his eye able to hold it. But people, a lot of people, you can hear, but you're not able to keep it. It's in keeping it that it becomes life in you. You keep it until you can obey it. But what you can't keep, it will disappear. The test first before obeying is that can you keep this thing? That is the first test every child of God must go through. Is to keep it. Is to keep it in your heart. But because you have to remember, case of the world will come so that you should not keep it. Fatigue will come in the meeting for you not to keep it. There are many things that will come so that you cannot keep it. As is hearing the thing, you can't keep it. And to keep it, God will prove that you can keep it for a long time. That you can keep it. You can keep it. To keep it, you can hold it on. When you keep it, you dwell, you, you dwell on it. Because every man will keep things. God has designed us to be a keeper. It's what we keep that we obey. So you have to keep it. When you keep it, you, be, you dwell on it. it. When you keep keeping it, it, it will permit your thoughts. It will become your meditation. It's, a, it's, my, it's, my, it's my meditation all day long. It, it, God, if it, so that, that attitude is not for pastors alone that must keep it. It is the duty of everybody. Thy word have I kept in my heart. Because if you don't keep, you will sin. You must be a keeper. He was talking to the book of the church. He said, because you have kept the word of my patient, I will also keep you for the temptation. That will come. That's, that's Philadelphia church in Revelation 33. So you can see that, so, so you need to keep and keep it until you can know. For that's the truth in, in the inward part. And you will, that's the most inward part. You know, broadly, scripture divided our inward part into two. Art and mind. Although further, further, when you can begin to talk about conscience, which is an integral part, faculty of the heart. But there is, but, but they feel by the understanding said there's the hidden part. And what in the part was designed for is the place of knowing. It's the place of knowing. That knowing is not mental ascent, it's the place of intercourse what you have kept. It's to intercourse it. Is to be united. Wow, with it. When you say, "Man, no," Paul was talking Second Corinthians, Second Timothy, chapter one. Second Timothy, chapter one. Like, is it verse eight or nine? He said, "I know whom I believe." Say, be not thou therefore. No, no, this is not it in the heart. That you see, you see people don't know. People are lettered. You can see everlasting life in the Bible and it's talking about eternal life. Uh, in the Bible, you see everlasting life. But really, it's eternal life it's talking about there. You, have to, you must follow spirit, the body of that light there. Not everywhere you see everlasting life means it's like eternal. Some of them are eternal life. But when you are let our mind, eternal life is away, is away, is away, is away. So the, by the time you get to a guy that will let her, it will flow you and sweep your way. Because you have not, you are yet to know. For which cause I suffer this thing. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know. Everybody say that, church. I know. So with this I know here, yeah, Paul was not talking about revelation. I have understanding. He's talking about a walk in the hidden path. That means, by the reason of my hidden path, Wisdom, I did it. If, if wisdom, I carry out a work in me. That will make me to know wisdom in the hidden parts. And that is the labor that our generation must make. We must not be too shallow. We must not be too superficial of nothingness. You know, I like, you know, Apostle, Apostle James is terrible. Superfluity of nothingness. That English it will take Pastor T.J. to a straight. Because I'm not an Englishman. Pastor T.J. is an Englishman. In the blasting. So, so you can see that I know whom I believe. So, so you can see that he said, 
I will, that one is that I will make mention of them that have known me. It's not just talking about those who have been hearing revelation. Because there's something you want to talk about. Because those who know him, those are the ones that can design those that are born of Rehab and those that are born in Zion. It, it's not by physical looking of men that are born. You need law to know. For it shall come to pass in that day, I will make a new covenant with them. That's from Romans 8, sorry, Hebrew 8 and Hebrew 10. I will make a new covenant with them. Not like the one that I are saying, no, the Lord. So, so you can see that you can't know the Lord until laws are written in your heart. And laws are written in your mind. So that agree with that book of Psalm 50. But that is that truth in the inward part. So the giving of truth in the inward part is the delivery of laws on the inward part. Because the inward part is that you, you will know him in a measure. Or they say, when you will know the Lord. You know, Jesus is whom we have been called to know. Hallelujah, somebody. What did I say, church? Jesus is whom we have been called to know. But our knowing him, sir, we have to grow in our knowing him. So, so there's a law of Christ, or the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which is faith unto charity, because those are the law. When a man has obeyed faith, a man has obeyed hope, a man has obeyed charity, you will come to know Christ. When they are telling you about Christ, you say, I know him. You say, how do you know him? <laughs> He's in the hidden part. Because what informs you knowing him is that laws are being written upon your heart. Laws are being put in your mind. And those laws have constituted knowing. So you don't know him by letter. You are not knowing him by what Tom Pastor Thompson told you. You are knowing him by the reason of his laws that is out of you. So I will make a new covenant with them. I will write my laws in their heart. I will put it in their mind. And when I do that, in that I put it in their mind. Then I will be to them a God. So I will be to them a God. And they shall be to me a people. Not them. I will be to them a God. That, that be to them a God. It means that, that my law in your heart and in your mind is like connected you to the server of God. Where God where God's secrets are continually in abundant supply to you. I will be to them a God. You are being connected to the mainframe of God. God. <laughs> then they shall be to me my people. No one will tell his neighbor, no, the Lord, that neighbor there is your brethren. They are brethren together in that same company. That neighbor there is brethren. I mean, the brethren in the school of the covenant, that are well in covenant, on the school of covenant, or the school of everlasting life. Pastor, can we have five thousand sons, sir? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hear the Lord saying, Writing my laws even upon your heart. Writing my laws even upon your heart. 
I need your heart to write my laws. I need your heart to inscribe even my law. For you see, the writing of my laws is the writing of my persons. The writing of my law is the transference of my nature even into you. When your heart is not prepared for to receive my law, what you are not receiving is you are not receiving my person. For every soul that receives my law, and my law is written and inscribed upon the tables of the heart, that person, that soul is receiving my person. For you see, Christ came by the writing of a law, so also everlasting life will come by the writing of a law. The way Christ came by the writing of the law of the spirit of life which is in Christ Jesus, the same way the laws of the Father would have to be written upon the heart for a man to partake of that which is called everlasting life. The same way the laws of God would have to be written upon the heart for a soul to partake of that which is God life. I need to write upon you. I need to write my laws upon you. For you see, it's in the writing of my law that is in the tra 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 transference of my nature. I want to transfer my nature. I want to transfer the Father into you. I want to transfer God into you. I want to move myself from where I am, where I'm stored, I'm moving into you, into you, into you. Therefore, be 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 pa 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 ra ta pa pre ke teli brando ke toli ya de levrendo li ya te manda li ba ya ta la ganos te siya. Guard your heart, guard your heart, guard your heart, guard your heart. Watch out for 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 your heart. Do not allow another law to be written upon your heart. For you see, in the realm of the spirit, it is the Lord that is written upon your heart that you would look like. It is what is written upon your heart that you would look like and behave like. When the laws of death is written upon a heart, the man would naturally behave like that which is dead. Therefore, guard your heart. Be careful what is written upon your heart. Be careful what is written upon your heart. I am using this time and this season to write my law, to transfer my law. It is the season of the making of the Father even in the midst of the people. Oh, remember I said even to my disciples, have you not seen me? And you say you don't know the Father. For everyone that has seen me has seen the Father. For the Father wrote his laws upon me. And I took the law and I kept the law and I became that law and I became the Father. When I write upon you and you keep it, you would become just like me. This is the secret. I'm sharing with you a secret. I'm is writing of the law. The work of God. Exodus 32. Give me from, let's see from verse 15. Okay. Okay, look at this. And Moses turned and went down from the mount. And the two tables of the testimony we are in his end. Let's read the next phrase together. I want to go to church. And on the other side, and the order, we are also there written. Then verse 16. Want to go? I would say the work of God is the writing of God. When you say the work of God, the work of God is God writing a thing. Christ is a work of God. The Son of God is a work of God. That's why you remember in that John, they came to Jesus, say, what shall we do that may do the work of God? <laughs> the work of God is not, is not carrying speaker. The work of God is writing. Say, so, so you can see in that Exodus 32 and the table where the work of God, the writing was the writing of God engraved on the tables. Is there anything in this verse 17? 
Okay, thank you so much. So, so we can see that it will take the work of God in a man to say a man have known the Lord. Without the work of God, which is the right thing of God, upon the heart and in the mind. That is when you can say, you know God. Or you know the Lord. Or you have known Christ. You know, let's start from Christ. So, Christ is a law. Christ is the law of life. Christ is the law of a godly man. Christ is the law of peace with God. What did I say? Christ is Christ is. Christ is the law of peace with God. Or Christ is the law of acceptance of God. That peace with God is, a, is the law that God accepts. So Christ is the, is the a man that God accepts. So Christ, when you say Christ, you see, Christianity is a hard thing. It has nothing to do with yearning. It has nothing to do with cream. That's what to do with clothes. Christianity, the faith, is of the heart. That's why you call it believer. And what belief is not dress. What belief is not your skin that believe. What belief is the heart. And that's why they call you a believer. So, yeah, so Christianity is not clothes. Neither is he saying, neither am I giving license to you to, to be to be to be unruly. But I'm saying that it's not. That's why, even it's not only Christianity, even the Old Testament. Prophet Samuel learned it in a very terrific way. Which all, okay, don't say all, which me, because I know all of you are higher than me, by learning, you are there. Which me, I've been discipled again and again and again. The people that you think, when you look at their faces, Prophet Samuel was talking about Pastor Moses. Is it two, two weeks ago? People that you think that, wow, this brother, he can never fail God. This is what I'm saying. The way, this one is, okay, pastor said, his name is the boy, his brother faced us. His face is set like a flame. But when you look at people like Pastor TJ, Pastor TJ is too, uh, is too fine. You can never say this pastor cannot do eternal life. <laughs> this one, you can't do eternal life. It's too fine. Because people that people that eternal life must be a gag. So you must have sober. Then your neck must be clean. <laughs> like if you look at Larry, you said Larry can never be. Larry, Larry is an hip hop star. <laughs> but Professor Samuel Ato, I'm talking about the Christianity of the heart. Professor Samuel, I learned that on a costly way. This was a prophet that I ever gave. God posted about Samuel, sir. He said there are two people God spoke in the Old Testament. God spoke about Samuel. God spoke about Moses. Those guys, when they offer intercession, when they offer intercession, God know they know how to receive, they know how to corner God into a corner. They just, they just corner God and put God in the corner. The only wise God, they know how to do. God had to say, God told Jeremiah, God said, Jeremiah, he said, move Moses and Samuel. Come to come and intercede for these people. Pray, I will not answer it. God quickly said it. Pray, in, case you have, in case by reason of angelic activity, you have learned secrets that <laughs> Moses and Samuel usually use. And you want to use it this time and not these people? I'm not going to agree. They are going to captivity. <laughs> then said the Lord unto me, this was talking to Jeremiah, because Jeremiah, Light or cry. He has, a, he has a whole chapter called Lamentation. You have been lamenting. My biological sister is like that. When we are growing up, my biological sister, everything that he want my dad to do, my dad actually do it. 
My biological minister knows how to pester my dad. When my dad has gone to work and come back, we just stay at the window. <laughs> the, the man is resting. This lady, what he wants, he wants to get it. You know, children, we don't understand that resources have been apportioned. You don't know. The man is just a civil servant. And it's not now that people are earning 250,000, 300, and you see small boy, he's, he's in his house, inside his laptop. He's doing, he's doing product management and he's collecting, he's collecting 100,000. It's not. In those days, we only have two families. It's still that you are what? There? A civil servant man that have five children. So it's good. And the money is not so it's just, but my sister does not understand English. <laughs> so by the time, he will just stay. When the, when the man wants to sleep, that is when you will just be doing this time. <laughs> so, but, 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 yeah. <laughs> but me, I can't do that. I, me, but that it's kind of the tennis slap that I will see. <laughs> so I have to behave myself because my dad. He, when he became born again, he was a military man. So when he became born again, he left. He was out of restitution, all this restitution. So it was restitution that would make him live military. So, because he was a, he was a deeper lifer. So, so they don't bomb me. Because I don't want dirty slap in my body or my head. So, so what I'm trying to say, what was that? What thought was I saying that? <laughs> Okay, Moses and, uh, and Samuel. Moses and Samuel know how to build guns in a corner. Moses and Samuel. And Saul, even when Saul was rebellion, Saul took advantage of it. He said, he, said, he went to go and bring Samuel up for the grave. Because you know that this guy, anything he has gone. That even when Samuel's death, Saul Trust that this somewhere was all right. But because Bible says, say there's his word never fall to the ground. God will raise for us in the New Testament men that know how to ask the Father. Amen. Joker said that. He said, You are not asking me, but it shall come to in that day. In that day. And it's the day of everlasting life. Yeah, we are alive there. It's not, it's not the day of Christ. It's the day of everlasting life. When we, when we become in that day, you shall ask the Father. Whatsoever. It's not in Christ. Because you, are, you still have corruption. When they tend to ask, you are going to ask because you are lost. James chapter 1. So he told them, he said, if Moses and Samuel, those guys, during the course of waiting and prayer, I started studying the life. Sorry. Let me just give some little gist. And those guys have power. You think that Jacob has power with God? And when you look about these two men, they are, they are weak. They are very weak. How do you know? Very weak. You speak about this kind of prophetic stature. Look at, somebody wanted to go and anoint another king. He said, when you get there, say, I <laughs> say, I know. A prophet, you call fire down and destroy. It's not like Elijah. That call fire or Elijah that call lion and tear people bring. <laughs> you can see the kind of prophetic mantle that Samuel is wearing. It's like Moses. He was the one that ordained Esau. Sorry, um, uh, Saul. And he wanted to go and ordain. If like me, I carry my oil. If I'm the one, I carry my oil. I go and ordain. He said, Prophet Samuel, where are you going? Ah, what? Am I answering to you? <laughs> when, when did I begin to now answer to you? Are you man? Are you not, Are you man? Telling me anywhere I'm going to? Because of asking me, you know God have rejected you. I'm going to go and answer. <laughs> oh, yeah, you see somewhere saying that ah, that saw we kill me. Oh, I'm going to tell okay. What you write and say? Why you can say you want to? You came to sacrifice, but really you came to worship. But really you worship. But you also have other things. You also did the place of worship. You anoint a king, a replacement for someone. 
But it was his heart that I, I saw. It was like Moses that his sister Miriam that raised him. He said, he said God, that he was helpless. That was the strength of the intercession. And Jeremiah was looking like that too. Because when they grow, old grown man started crying and lamenting before God. God said, you this man, you are going to put, this people are going to go to the cabin, no matter how you lament. Because he was just trying to bring forth, when you read lamentation, he was just bringing arguments before God. Why God should, should slow down the captivity and change 70 years of captivity. All those arguments of lamentation. God said, even this matter has been determined. Daniel, as I said, 70 years, I won't change my mind. Even if Moses and Samuel come to me, these people, these people they are going to and they're going to stay there. So I was, I'm talking about people coming to the person non, knowing. You know, God wants us to know him like that. Where, where it's not just where by the reason of obedience. Walk. So I was talking about that the work of God is writing of God. It's writing of God. It's writing of God. That's how God checks his work. It's writing. The more God writes upon you, and that's God's work. He said, the work of God, the tables of the two tables of stone, and the work of God, which are the writing of God. And God wants to write it in our heart. I want to put it in our mind. That no one will tell his neighbor, no, the Lord. That's what they call covenants. To know the Lord. So, knowing the Lord, as I said, is of the heart. It has nothing to do with our clothes, it has nothing to do with our shoes. Anytime we bring Christianity, I'm not talking to those who are here. Anytime we bring Christianity to clothes and shoe, we forfeit the provision of grace. It's an abuse to the faith. We have just abused the faith. So, so we can see that they shall know the Lord. So, so you can't know the Lord in this sense. There's a play, God's servant was teaching it, maybe it's also one, maybe one Tuesday or one writing vision, was trying to separate between wisdom and understanding and knowledge. You know, he was trying to separate that. that play, you know, you see, there's a play where knowledge is higher than wisdom. That's what we're describing about. We are the, the hidden part. You hold reality. Your whole reality is, is a work that has been done on the inside. But that's my covenant. I will make with them. I will write my laws in their heart. I will put it in their mind. No one will tell his neighbor, know the Lord, for they shall know me from least to the greatest. So it shows that in the place of knowing, there are lists. And there's the greatest. So, we don't all know the same way. And so, and what determines the least from the greatest is what kind of measure of laws you have received. Have you received the full law or you have law in a measure? Because the law is a writing. Writing. They don't just write it at once. They write it. it, it, it you go through different seasons of writing until you receive the whole law. So, the level of law that has been written in you is the measure of knowledge of the law you are coming to. That's why there are some things that three years ago, Pastor Leke, you designed as sin. Five years after, when more law were written, you begin to see that those things that were righteousness before to you now, they are now sin. What have happened between five years, three years of life, you have had more law written. And that law has given you a sense of to know what God's standard to you. So, 
So, so we cannot be increased in knowledge and increased in judgment. That will increase in knowledge and increasing in judgment or abandoning in knowledge and all judgment is not possible until laws are increasing, which are the work of God and increasing. So, 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 so there are certain things that are evil that I am not refusing because I can, I can receive understanding when they are being taught. But that does not mean that I have known because I need something to know that will make me to know wisdom in the hidden path. It's like the blessing of Urim and Tumi that I preserve to design judgments. So, so you can see that for me to be able to escape corruption, because corruption is a body of knowledge. Yes, corruption is a body of knowledge. Corruption is a body of knowledge. When First John chapter 3 says, Whosoever is born of God cannot sin. God bless you, sir. For the seed of God remaineth in him. What they call the seed of God there is the law of God. It cannot sin. The corruptible seed, and that corruptible seed, he has the living and he has the abiding. So, sir, until a man has moved into the place where the incorruptible abideth, that is he that cannot sin. It's not the realm of him that is living. The corruptible can be living in you, but it's not yet remaining. It is there that it's the, it's the one that the seed is, is abiding that cannot sin. So, it simply means that you cannot tend such a man. Incorruptibility is inability to be tempted. What did I say, church? That means you can no longer be tempted with sin. Because so long you can be tempted, book of James said, let no any man say when he's tempted, he's tempted of God. For God cannot tempt any man, neither can God be tempted. So why can God be tempted? Because God, the seed, is in God. To tend, you tend so that a man can sin. You tend so that a man can transgress. Because sin is a transgression of the law. It's to break the law. So there's no need for temptation when you cannot sin. Hallelujah, somebody. For we have an high priest who is tempted at, at all points, yet. We tempted at all points, yet. Tempted at all points, yet. Without sin. So you, so you can't talk about sin without talking about temptation. So, and First John chapter 3 says, Whosoever, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. Or the incorruptible seed is in a state of abiding. It's not living. When someone is still living, he can still be tempted. And he can still sin. Yes. That is why the operation of the first prophets, first teachers. And then in first John chapter 2, that was talking about them, for they were with us. But they were not all of us. For if they had been with all, they would have abide or continue with all. But they went out that they may be revealed that they have not been all of us. 
And the season I was talking about there was the season of everlasting things. The, 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 the sack of everlasting things has not been completed into a season of remaining or abiding because everlasting has two dimensions. The seed that liveth and that abided. So a state of abiding of the sea is a time where you can no longer be tempted. No longer. Because you can't sin. You can't be tempted. So Satan, and Satan does not waste his temptation. <laughs> you think that because Satan is a businessman. Yeah. Satan don't waste temptation. Just like Jesus too will not waste special pair yeah. to dark nor swine. So temptation appear. Temptation are offers of corruption. Temptation are gifts. They are offering of corruptible seed. So temptations are offerings. They are gifts of Satan. He took Jesus to high mountain and showed the kingdom of this world and his glory. What he showed Jesus was not what Enormous was doing. Because as Moses asked very, that's not what he should show you. He showed you the kingdom of this world. Say kingdom of this world. In the book of Daniel, Daniel 10, Daniel 12. In Daniel 12, There is, they make mention of two things there. They make mention of the, the prince of Persia. And they make mention of the, the kings of Persia. They talk about the prince of Persia and the king of Persia. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me in one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. So you can see there's the prince of Persia, or the prince of the kingdom of Persia. But Persia is a prince of the kingdom. But there are kings under the prince of Persia. Before you now see the human being that's the king over Persia. So he called the prince of the kingdom. So what issue Jesus saw? It was that issue Jesus because these prince and these kings are being. <laughs> you know, forget this. You no, know, don't don't look, don't forget this movie you will watch and you see on and you see one black thing. That those are not how those princes look like. Oh. Don't let movie blind your, your mind. When you see prince, and you see kings, because that was a show Jesus, the kingdom and the glory. You no. Know, someone was teaching, he said, you know a king by his wearing. Yeah. When he was teaching glory, that glory is not efficient. That glory is essence. The person, the inward. What he showed Jesus was these princes. <laughs> that you know you're a human being. It's your body. So you see these guys, see the oppression, where seamless oppression, where this guy they will do. <laughs> Look at these kings. <laughs> they say you want to make you king of the Jew. King of the Jew. Ah, don't know that there is so low. There's something you can be a king. If I, he say he's showing the kingdom of our, he's showing all the kingdom. I mean, I will make you to be to come over all these guys. And it's not just one kingdom issuing kingdoms. So you remember Persia, Persia has many kingdoms under them. You remember that Persia came to, came to Babylon. Babylon has the, two, what, the northern kingdom. 
Judah and Benjamin under them. You remember? Hallelujah, somebody. Am I, are you dis, am I, I'm not disconnecting you. I'm trying to talk about temptation. <laughs> God, when you talk about temptation, it's not that. Jesus, Jesus, I won't fornicate. I won't fornicate. I won't fornicate. That's work of the flesh. That's work of the flesh. What they call temptation. Jesus can say, pray, deliver us from temptation. What they call evil. What they call evil. What they call evil. Evil. So when they call them evil, these are spirits, they call them doers of evil. Princes and kings. Yoruba has one handage. I don't know how to interpret it. They are the one that knows how to take gold from you and give you consume. <laughs> Ladies are the one that understand what I'm talking about. They will take all gold from you and give you consume. Those are, those are Hebrew doers. They will take eternal life from you and give you the kingdom of this world. When they are talking about idol, you know, when you see, when you read 1 John chapter 2, and John was talking about love of the world and the things of the world, he's not talking about darkness. He's not talking about power of darkness there. So you, we say we know that. He's not, he's not talking about the world in the sense of ungodliness and unrighteousness. He's talking about iniquity unto iniquity. Because the world has two oppression. The whole world light in wickedness. And the world has darkness. The love is not life in Christ is not deep with the darkness of the world, which is called ungodliness, unrighteousness. But the law of wickedness in the world, war, because you see the beast is the wicked, which is carrying the woman. So it's also oppression, but it's now a very strong the war, but not the war in the essence of lust of the eye. There's what they call lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and part of life as evil that the studio to have mountain and shoo him. Or what happened to Apostle John in John? Like he saw the mother of our Lord. He said, and I, will, I admire with great admiration. This is the man that I finished Christ's curriculum. They are showing the things shortly so I come to pass. So shortly come to pass, and you still admiring. That's why you cannot be overconfident when you are in the season of everlasting life. You have to be meek, my brother. You have to be my meek. Oh. The, well, the person we are dealing with is a terrible being. Oh. Pastor, Look, 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 look is to for look, is to cause you to 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 consider, is to cause you to consider, is to cause you to meditate, is to cause you to look and look and look and look until the image is formed, until the image is formed. And when the image is formed, you are taken. You are taken. For this is the essence of satanic temptations. It is to cause you to look, to sow a seed into your soul. So that you can be carried away. You can be carried away. You can be distracted from the promise. For the seed of the enemy, the seed of the adversary is another promise. It's another promise that have glory. Is another promise that have power. Is another power promise that have honor. Is another promise that when a man look at it, you can't take away your eyes. You can't take away your eyes. For this reason, my father strengthened me. 
and raise me as a priest to minister sons who will pass through the corridor of temptation to make sure they are succored with another seed, which is the seed of eternal life. The seed of eternal life. For the reason for temptation is to take away the promise, is to cause your eyes to lose gaze of the promise. For no man without the help of the high priest, see the Spirit of God. For no man without the help of the high priest, will be able to escape the offering of this great dragon. They are Brosivin and Glacoste, the Brunga Poli and the Chauvante, Eligatos Tavante. They are lofty. They are glorious. They are full of honor. They are full of power. They are full of glamour. But a poster, so it will take the administration of the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God, the high priest to rescue souls by the giving of the seed of eternal life to them. For this is the succoring of the high priest to give things that is better, to give things that are more glorious, even to sons, even sons, even sons who shall be tempted, who will be tempted, who will be tempted, who will be tempted. So the high priest will give things, the high priest will give things, things that will succor, things that will strengthen men to pass through the corridor of temptation and to overcome temptation. You have to rely on the high priest. You have to trust the high priest. You have to know the high priest. You have to receive the gift of the high priest to pass through this hour of temptation. For it's the hour of great temptation. See the spirit of God. You see? Until we arrive at the abiding of the incorruptibility, we cannot assess the eternal. Jesus Christ was talking about, he said, for you are the one, was talking about the disciple, he said, for you are the one that have continued with me in my hour of temptation. Then I divide you. So there's no dividing you, the twelve throne. So there's no throne. So Revelation 12 can't be happen until we are fine. What well, we are passed through the hour of temptation. And the hour of temptation that we must do, that we must, there must be a walk. What they call living and abiding. Living is a law, which is called a seed of God. Remain it in him. That what remains abiding. No God's servant, Pastor Becker was laboring on Thursday too, yeah. The, the, the strivings, can we abide? No, that's why they start using charity to teach us to abide. Now, abide their faith, hope, and charity. You start learning strength to abide. Or you read Corruption. For if, 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 if the faith be in you and you are grounded, unmovable from the hope, all, all those exercises. No, in course of waiting, God was just telling me, as, as I was praying, preparing for this, God told me, there's a place of profitability of God the exercise. Okay? If people have not properly done God the exercise, they won't exercise in the time of everlasting life. Because it's an exercise of the soul. Exercising. He said that's why he said God the exercise profiter. What? Prof God the exercise profiter in all things. Realm of all things. Realm of all things. Who are the things of everlasting and the things of God? Realm of all things. If you, if you don't identify yourself where God is, you, you won't have profit into the season of all things. Into, I mean, the, you will, if you exercise where you realm of all things, you're able to keep exercising there. So, as I was saying, realm of abiding is a state of the soul where Offering and gift of corruption cannot be offered you anymore. Satan knows when the soul has arrived at abiding. When the seed of God, when the writing of God is abiding, when the abiding work of God has been done in a man. Satan knows. That's what Satan came to finally check. You see, Satan 
Satan. Satan still came to the throne on the, on the cross. The, Satan knew that Jokas have attained abiding work since. But Satan still believed. Because Satan is a believer, but also a doubter. Yes, no? That's why you doubt. Because why you are doubting is the work of a being. You didn't, you, God didn't create you to doubt. Why there's doubt inside you, where there's fear inside you, where you make alternative because it's a work. The enemy did it. That's not how your soul was designed before. The soul is meant to be a believer. So when you see a person that is doubting, it's because the enemy did it. It's just a sign of the work that is inside him. Paul was warning Timothy about that. He said he should refrain from those who are doubting, disputers. They, 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 they bring for doubt. He said, God was that such person, he said they are profane. They, they say walk inside of them. Don't, don't shun it. This kind of self of such things. Reframe yourself on that. So, so you can see that Satan believes and demon believes too, and they tremble. But Satan keep it that this son of God that you say you are, they say in him, they say in you they are well pleased. And I even say they say they should, they should maybe they hear you. That people should not be hearing you now, Abi. God no fit talk again. Now in you, you and you they talk now. Eh? Now you they talk. Okay. Satan, that's what are they being. Because God will not say they should hear a person if it's not an abiding fellow. If the person has capacity to change, God will not simply hear him. Because why God didn't talk about Jesus until when, on the month, on month, month of salvation. God didn't, God didn't say it at Jordan. Because he was still about to seal up the work of everlasting. <laughs> because but God will say, hear ye him. Ah! That means, you shall to say, you are tight, man. You say you over tight. Sorry, sorry for starting one of that. I mean, the work where I do there, the work, the work they can't play. Nothing they move by, you know, they shake. Oh man. They work an abiding work. They work, they work, they say if they stay so everything will pass away. You won't know they go. Then God now say, Yeah, yeah him. That means that what you have done in him, you can't change it. Okay, Satan's okay. They say you should hear you now. Okay. But Satan's, you know, this means me. If God said you should hear somebody, I know that oh, yeah, you're just I don't lose them. But Satan still brought. Because open time, I, I, I just feel I should say this. Because I, 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 ask, I, I ask people that say, hey, that if you say hey, everlasting when you come to corruptibility, then come be, uh, then why does Satan came to Jesus? I won't let you. God knows that Jesus, Jesus God. See, there's certain things that God will not allow. So God, God was, thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, thank you, God. All those temptations that was happened to Jesus is to prove, is to make open show of spirits. Yeah, it's just to prove Satan that it, what we did here, and, and when God wants to prove, like Pastor Mika said, that God proved seven times. Because if you do first and say, uh, the, the, no pastor can study material engineering. When you are building material, you put different load on materials, different weights on materials. Materials testing. So do, when you do a concrete, you put some load on it and see if it will crush. Okay, so okay, with this one, you can take this one. It will also add more weight and see. Until when it can, it cannot, where you know, where you want to test the limit, the strength limit of a concrete work. So all those things that was coming to Jesus that God was trying to put up more weight on him. Satan, God, Satan, after, Satan, after Satan come and say, uh, I tested him with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But he didn't budge. He got me. I said, God said, I don't tell you that that guy, my everlasting being, he they he, he, he abide. Say, God, you know abide. You know abide. You know abide. I know agree. You never know abide. God said, when you go finish that now, you don't say, when I tell you, you say the work where I do inside for Job. 
that the world they abide. You they argue. Say, God, that my job. No one, no one fit survivor. One blow, seven die. <laughs> God, okay. God, not the way he was coming to uh, about Job. That's okay. Go, 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 go ahead. Go, go, go and try. Go and try. And God kept on, and the one Satan was, God Satan kept on tempting Jesus for three years and a half of his ministry. There's no day he was leaving Jesus. Every day. He was keeping Jesus close marking. It was a close marking. Very close marking. You, you, you are the one that sleep and slumber. Satan knows that I had. My message is very simple to this afternoon. That means, what does it mean to be an abider? Let's say someone, something can remain. Because it is he that abide that they open the corridor of a turn or two. He that abide in the secret place of the Almighty, then the most high. Because the Almighty there is the everlasting Father. So, so this. So, what? When they say a man, as the, the seed of God, remain not in him. He cannot commit sin. That means he has a law that has been written in him that no matter the temptation, because God knows what he put inside Satan. God know the limiting strength of Satan. It's we that we don't know. God knows his end. Because, because his strength is determined by the materials that is inside of him. He's the workmanship of his tabernacles. And that is where he fetch his temptations. And I say his temptation, I say they are his offering and gift. Temptation is the gift Satan offers you. That's just the way God. So God said, now gift versus gift. Pastor Emeka was teaching about gift. It's gift, that's a gift. There are gifts I'm going to give you. When I give that gift, law of sin and death, you have bit over it. And by the time I give you another gift, called the gift of the Father, or the gift of the Son of God, the beloved Son of God. And there's another gift I can give you, called eternal life. And they said that the gift and the kingdom of God, God does not repent from it. They call it gifts and the calling of God. Gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. Because what Satan offers men are gifts also. So what we call temptation are gifts. And there's some gifts. Satan don't just Satan offer gifts, the high premium gifts are offered to men that have some I laws. So when people say, for you will not be allowed to be tempted above what you can bear, that's what they mean. That means they, Satan, just that like God will not cast special pair to you. So Satan too does not give his gifts and his promises that are very high. Satan just size you up. This boy, I offer you $10,000. Just $10,000. 585 naira. He won't come for meeting again. <laughs> Everything everlasting life finish with that. Just a thousand dollars. So that can look at so um uh all family ministry. Ministry. I'm a Latin way. Give her another half a plot of land there. Let him be doing it there. Okay. 
question. They say, I go teach her. I didn't say so. Not me say so. I'm just joking. So, Satan knows. So, as I say, Satan offers gifts. So, what they call temptations are gifts. You'll find that also in that, that book of Jude. He said, for you desire to have. It's what you want to have. <laughs> for you desire to have. Even and what you desire to have, sometimes when you have, you ask, you also ask amiss. Because you want to spend it on your lusts. Therefore, any man, when he's tempted, do not say he's tempted of God, for God does not tempt any man with evil. For every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own. So I get my own, you get your own. Don't look like me as if I'm the only devil in this place. So, and that is why God is also bringing provision to us. Uh, but provision of God to all is his law. So the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus make me free from the law of sin and death. So sin and death is also a gift. They are also gifts. They are gifts. They are gifts. Satan can give a man big ministry. But unknown to him in that big ministry is where his temptation are. It will take a man with discernment, I mean a man with law, to make sure he beats all those temptations. But all the, but I can tell you, but a man grew, the person of Jesus, our Lord grew, that there was nothing that Satan could offer him here anymore. What Satan could offer him is that he offered the kingdom of this world and the glory. So, so, and that's the best Satan has. That, that's the best of Satan. Everybody said the kingdom of this world. <laughs> Just patient alone had how many kingdoms under them. And patient now came, you know, patient, patient took over Babylon. Babylon had kingdoms under them. Because when Babylon was, was a kingdom, that Babylon had the northern kingdom, Judah and what and Benjamin, they brought them. Assyria to the ten tribe. So, so it was not only Babylon that was a kingdom on earth. There are other kingdoms under them. There was Babylon, there was Assyria, there were Medes. So there were kingdoms. And under these of those kingdoms, there are massive kingdoms under them. And one man, you see, when you see those kings of those days, they can put like 30 kingdoms. But ordinary, they are not just ordinary. On that day, there are prince, there's the prince. Like, what, who, we, who it was a prince of Pesha that we stood down here. So, a prince that can withstood the supplication of the beloved. Say, an, say a prince that can withstood the supplication of a beloved in the Old Testament. He said, you know what I mean? A, a prince that can withstood a type of Christ. Because this is my, this is my beloved son. But that was a beloved. So. So, so you can see that those beings are ordinary, ordinary beings. That it, it, it took my care, the chief of the prince. Yes. My care too is another prince. But, uh, but among those princes of him, he's the chief of the prince. That now came to liberate him so that he can go and bring forth that standing. To the beloved. So you can be sure that what Daniel was asking for was not a small thing, understanding of the matter. And that understanding was that it was to make end of sin. But that was the understanding, wasn't it? 
The age, that prince we were told, and the king, don't let the secrets of how to make end or sin. I mean, how to make end or what Satan used to tempt man. To make end of sin. That was what Daniel was asking. Because Daniel was praying for the transgression of his people. That why is it that every time we obey God, we come to the land, we leave the land again. They send us, we come back. Is there no answer to deal with this issue of sin? Bend this thing once and for all. Then Daniel broke into the vision of the Messiah. Because the Messiah, when it's come, he shall show all, shall tell us all things. Those all things are what Messiah keep to bring end to sin. Reconcile iniquity and also what does this do to transgression and to finish transgression. So what Daniel was praying for was issue of because Daniel was fired. That, because Daniel kept on bringing we went to Egypt, we went to Babylon, we, why is it that and recall throughout the days of the kings, the judges, our nation, media, that we can't stay in the land. We cannot stay in our inheritance. God will move us out. Or they will come and, or nation will come and persecute us. It has always been from one transgression to another. Can't say it was the burden of his heart that they sent this being to come and give to Daniel. And the prince will stood him. Because he knew that what they brought for Daniel was an age long question. Age long questions. Answer to sin. Answer to transgression. Answer to iniquity. Can, can't we assess a righteousness that's everlasting? Can't, can't iniquity are being for men to break the law? Can't we put an, can't we finish it? Can't we put hand to sin? The issue of the Messiah making covenants, making covenant with us. Can we come into those reality where things, all things are open to us? Let the Messiah come. The Messiah, the Prince, also can bring answer to these issues that are combating humanity in every generation. Man, I don't answer to it because the Prince is boasting that no deliverance. That was what Daniel was asking for. Daniel was, not, Daniel was not just designed that let us return back to land, you know? It was not just that let us escape and go back to our land. Because it's not about going back to our land. If we go to our land, can we keep the law that will make us to abide in that land? Because it's the issue of abiding. Every time we go, they remove us from it. Can't a generation arise that can abide? That nothing will move them away from it. And what is making us not to abide is sin. What's making us not to abide is transgression. What's making us not to abide is iniquity. That was the desire of Daniel. That was what Daniel was, trans was, was making that session for. That I need answer to this. It's like Habakkuk. Maybe I've heard of you in the day. Revive the work in the midst of the year. It's answer. And that is what we should be doing. We should be making inquiry. Only seekers, only inquirers. Because when the Messiah that is called Christ is come, he shall show us the all things. <laughs> and they, in that vision, they broke the vision of the prince, the Messiah, to Daniel. That everything you're asking, it can't take place now. But there's a being that have answered to this thing. Is the is what is the matter the prince? We bring hand to sin. It will bring. It will finish trans, transgression. It will reconcile iniquity, and is the it will bring in everlasting righteousness. And then we are drawing the most holy. Because what it takes to do this thing is all things. It will tell us all things. He will tell us all things. He will tell us all things. He will tell us all things. things. 
So, so we can see that what we call the work of God, what we call the work of God is writings. <laughs> if, I, if there's anything I don't want you to forget, is that it's the work of God. When I say God has worked in a man, is how much law has been put into you. That's the work of God. And that's the labor of our parents. That's the labor of our pastors. That's the labor of our churches. To put laws into men. And I said, in our lost accusation, there's the least to the greatest. So, to show that there are stratas of the laws. Because what the enemy has done in us is not just a one-way thing. Because the wisdom that did the work, he has many things inside of it. He has stone. All manner of stone was thy covering. So, so was their workmanship. So the work of Satan inside us, the work, when I say, for this reason, the Son of God is manifest. He might destroy the work, all the works of the devil. Was it on Tuesday, last week I was, I was saying, I said, in that first John chapter 3, they mentioned, they call it all the works of the devil. And they say, to take away, to take away all sin. All in that book. The Son of God is manifest that he may take away all sin. may take away sin. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. He that have come to take away our sins, they say, in him there is no sin. What does he have inside that cannot allow sin to stay? What work did they do in him? That sin can stay. That the prince of this world cometh and find nothing inside of him. For in him there is no sin. And therefore, because in him there is no sin, he was manifested to take away our own sins. Because what he will use to take it away, he has it on his inside. What he will use to take it away, it's not external, it's inside of him. His father gave it to him. His God gave it to him. So, so when you say, a man has arrived at the abiding, it's in a man, mm, there's no sin. Or, John put it beautifully in second, from first John chapter 2, say there's no occasion of stumbling. That's how he put it in 1 John chapter 2. Occasion of stumbling. Everybody say occasion. occasion. Satan leave you and look for another occasion. If you fail one occasion, you come for another occasion. But when in a man, they have taken occasion of stumbling inside of him. That means you cannot use, yo, you see, one of thing. I'm trying to be more gentle. But I've not mastered it. When I see God's servant, I say, ah, Thompson, I wish you can, I can be so gentle. My head remains like that. But when you feel like this, I will turn it back. That's the, that's the, that's the occasion of stumbling. That's an occasion. Because you need to be gentle as a dove. Ah, you need to be gentle I will, as a dove and as a, I will, as a dove. I'm the wife as a serpent. To beat temptations. Grand. Though I might be living, but I cannot yet abide here. And God's intention is that I should abide. God don't just want you to live by the seed of incorruptibility. But the inheritance of incontability, because that was the mountain that the children of Israel, they were in the promised land, but they couldn't abide. They couldn't abide. Until your guys came. About that your guys came, Roman Empire has come to the land and living with them. The two tribal, the remaining two tribes, the ten tribe, they are forever gone. They couldn't recover them. Assyria took over the land from the ten tribes. They scattered them into nations. They become intermarried and intermingle that the ten tribe did not return back to date. They got lost into the nations of the earth. The only two tribes in the of Jokai, they were living 
even what with the Roman Empire. Because the Assyria king, he took them and took them away and brought another people to their land. And when they were in the promised land, beast was eating the people. And they said the people are not observing the law of the land. He said that you should go and bring some, a priest to come and teach them how to obey the law of the land. Because it's the land that eats its inhabitants. So God does not want to have inheritance incorruptible. But can the inheritance incorruptible, can it abide? Can it remain inside us? The, can it remain our hearts? When the tempter come, when he offer us things, will we allow the inheritance incorruptible away and just take what you ought to offer? See, I don't even know about this thing, corruptible. I'm going to call it corruptible. I'll be corruptible. I'll be what do you call this, Pastor? Corruptible. Corruptible. This one. This one is doing corruptible now. Why do you call, why are you guys calling this one corruptible? I think that you guys, you don't like, you don't like good things of life. <laughs> you guys, you have phobia for good things. Have phobia for good things. Oftentimes, when we speak like this, people think of this, we are sick people. Right? Just imagine people's thoughts. But God's people, this is still new, it's real. Just give. Just give, because some people will be born in Zion. You know, that's how I started. But those who are going to be born, they are going to be those who are known me. I'm just trying, I'm trying to just trace the world, knowing him, because that's the key. So we've been born of incorruptible seed. When a man has been born of incorruptible seed, when you are born of it, you overcome it. You are an overcomer. When you are born of it. When you are born of it. When you are hearing it, you are not being born of it. You need to do the commandment of it. For you to be born. That's like being born again. It's a process. It's as you receive the law. You are yielding. The work has been done in you. Our birth of incorruptible is a process. It's a procession. It's by engagement. It's writing. And we must submit ourselves to the dealings of God in that area. You know one thing, the Lord has been so shining light recently is our conscience. I know before. It's so fun. You know, God started twisting our conscience in this of faith and with love. But yeah, you must pay attention to your conscience like before. You have to be jealous with it. Anytime your conscience just is feeling someone, you must address it quickly. Anything your conscience is not, you must. Because in the season, which 2 Corinthians chapter 4 say, we therefore have this ministry. We fail not. We have renounced every eating thing. Let me say eating things. Because that eating things, that's where it's hiding. You need that eating thing, at the eating parts of you, you need it to carry out exercise. And God will need to show you things that are hiding in your eating parts. Every eating things. Because that eating thing place is where you're going to know. That will make you to know wisdom and eating parts. And exercise of your, our conscience is very, very, very important.
Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Si shofrefa tese malada si sofra male ni sinia hasun har dasani har dasana kai si udobar dasani belti si ador dasani resiela balte si vrianal te zubanden el taro no bashi ma musimi avena bu no bashi ya baba basi ni ono maka de zuma masi viano zaga baba basi anamanden ano chafio so pa plati si ova jakrade se pato lo padi de ste gai veziono san. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. He got your van tell you stand on your task your conscience. My voice simply has to repeat yes in a consciousness of me. Yes, you stop your conscious, yes, the conscious, yes, the conscience of consciousness. He cast your sepia talis, your son, a garipad, yes, a kiastonian, yes, your cast of consciousness. Any asopia stenia stakas. You need your conscience for even my consciousness. For there is a consciousness of me that must pervade even your conscience, even your hidden parts, even the depths of your being, even those secret places, even in you that iniquity seeks to rule over, seeks to rule over, seeks to remain hidden, seeks to remain hidden, and I, to a certain extent, that it can cause even the disconnect and an offense, even an offense, even an offense. Even offense, offense, that which is offensive to life, that which is offensive to the everlasting seed. For you see, a conscience that is not purged is a ground that is offensive even to the seed that is incorruptible. An incorruptible seed is offended by a conscience that's not purified. A conscience that's not purified. For Christ goes even to bring to your consciousness, even your conscience, a level of purity that will allow even the seed to germinate. Even the seed to germinate. For even the carriers of the everlasting seed will. Who need their ground, even the ground, even the ground of the heart, even their conscience is purged. Conscience is purged for the preservation of the seed. For the seed will not abide in a conscience that is not filled with the consciousness of me. I am the watering. I am the one that gives the increase to the seed, even upon a land, even upon a land, even upon a land, even upon a conscience, even a conscience that is filled with my consciousness, even my conscience. Consciousness. For what your conscience is fighting to hold is my consciousness, my consciousness, my consciousness, my writings, even my programming. So you will know what is good and what is evil, what is good and what is evil, even in your conscience. So you will know how to refuse even that which is evil and take the good. It's a thing of the conscience. It's a thing of the conscience. Allow even the words, allow the, even the speakings, even the sayings of everlasting life. Even to purge your conscience, you have to bring your conscience to a place that's void of offense, void of offense, for void of offense, void of offense, even before men and before me, even before the God, the God of the consciousness, even the God of the conscience. Allow me to sit in your temple, even your conscience, even your con co co conscience, your co conscience. I hear my spirit, do not excuse, do not excuse, pay attention, pay attention to those little, little, little nudgings in your conscience. Little, little nudgings in your conscience. For you see, those little nudgings seem little to you. But in the realm of the spirit, they are very loud. They are very loud promptings against that which will see the difference between them that are kept and them that are not kept. Them that are kept and them that are not, 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 not kept. Even in days ahead. Pay attention to the movements in your conscience. Quiet movements in your conscience. It is the spirit of God. Even preserving your ground that the seed of everlasting life will find ground to grow from. It is in your conscience, says the spirit of God. God. Thank you, 
conscience, even a Christ consciousness. Further cleansing, even further washing will bring you to everlasting conscience, even everlasting consciousness. We are bringing you from consciousness to consciousness, from consciousness to consciousness, even by the purging of your conscience, even by the washing of your conscience. Therefore, you will receive the words of conscience purging, for I write on a conscience. How I write is how I purge. How I purge is by my writing. I purge your conscience by writing new laws, for what corrupted your conscience were wrong laws, even wrong laws from the beginning Satan wrote laws in the heart of men and caused men to journey in their conscience in their conscience even in the recesses of their being away from the God consciousness and I will also restore them by writing, by washing of writing by writings of washings by rush, wa 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 washings of writings I will write upon your conscience even by the washing of my word my word, my word Word, my word, even the words of my mouth are like the pen of a ready writer to rewrite, even recode. I hear recode, I hear recode, 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 recalibrate your conscience to beat out of the order of things everlasting so that your conscience, so that is a conscience of one who has eaten butter and honey, eaten butter and honey, eaten butter and honey. He's exercised therein to discern between good and evil. He knows evil, he knows evil for evil is the movement of the tempter is the movement of the tempter and you need a conscious void of offense to detect the tempter to detect the tempter because the place of his high temptation are the places of your strength even of your strength of carnality even the strength that's not the strength of he who is seated upon the throne and that's where he began to rewrite man's conscience he rewrote man's conscience out of the order of seeking his provision outside of him that sits on the throne so I am going to wash your conscience again I will wash it again. I will wash it again. The words spoken to you in this season are for the washing of your conscience so that you'll be able to detect evil. You detect evil. You detect the tempter in his seductive power. You detect the tempter and you refuse evil even as the sun, even as the pattern sun, add butter and honey and learn also to refuse evil and to choose good. For a conscience that is void of offense is one that can choose good. I will show you how to choose good. Evil in your conscience. Your conscience will choose good. After I have written even my laws upon it and I've fulfilled the volume of the book installed in your conscience. Yeah, you will refuse evil and you will choose good. For I am the good. Eternal life is the good. That is the good. The good of the good. You will learn to choose that good and refuse damnation. Even refuse iniquity which is the evil. Says the Spirit of God. I was talking about, thank you so much, Pastor TJ. The Lord just told me, so the Lord just told me, the age long warfare is the warfare of abiding. I was talking about the book of Jude. See, the angels did not keep their estates, but left it. So, the issue of abiding has not only been among men, even in the heavenly order. They could not abide. They left their own habitation. Therefore, God put them in the chain of darkness. So, it's an age warfare. It's not just being received into the land of the living. The Lord is my portion in the land of the living. Can you abide in the land of the living? Do you? Uh, because there are things that can take a man out of the land of the living. Because you will imagine that what is Lucifer looking for? You know, some of us might read the Bible, we felt that this guy said to you. Which one of you that you when you read the Bible, you come like that? Oh, look at you, you're too old. You. Oh, I'm a bad man. I know that. Yeah, you look at this guy who is too much. No, he's too much. 
Look at how they deck you, the workmanship. And you are still not contented. That is, that's who, it's a soul. It's so, God, you, it's so not only man that has, that, that has this eternity that always want to aspire. Angel also have that. It's not only man. That is why they desire to look into the things of salvation. But what God had decided, and God purposely put that operation in them for the purpose of service to God. Because without it, you will, you will settle. You'll be at ease. But that will be satisfied when S of salvation enter into that. The answer to them is that S of salvation must enter into the land of the living, enter and abide and have access to eternal life. But the reason of that blessing, they minister to all so that we too can minister to them. So God, God also designed that thing inside of them. To, to search. No, Pastor, we'll talk, we'll talk about prayer and start search. Searching what did they have. Not only the prophet, even the angel desire to look into it. But just it's only man. God has that ordination. You are mad, will be the door that we assess it. Then when man come into it, then can also partake of it. Because God ordained it for God ordained it for the least of his creation that will come to it first. God has chosen the last. To be the first. So it's not just ascend the land of the living. Can we abide there? So the issue of abiding has been an age long contention. Angel will, well, Lucifer will not abide. All the elder angels will not abide. They left it. Because there are, and what made them not to abide is temptation. They were tempted out of it. He, 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 Adam and Eve could not abide in the garden because they were tempted out of it. So it's not just assessing domain of everlasting life. Do we have what it takes to remain? And you cannot remain if the seed of God does not remain. And that's why God must train our conscience very well. That's the Corinthians said. Therefore, we have in this ministry, we faint not. We have renounced every dignity of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness. Then what? Not angling the word of God. That word of God is incorruptible seed. Not angling the word of God deceitfully. But what? But manifestation of the truth. So, manifestation of the truth is manifestation of the Son of God. Because for this reason, the Son of God is manifest that He might take away our sin. Oh, for this reason, the Son of God may manifest that he might destroy all the works of the devil. So the manifestation of the truth is the manifestation of the Son of God. So when truth is being manifested, the Son is being manifested. So to heal us, and not just to heal us of things that make us not to abide, but to put things in us that will make us to abide in the land of the living. Or what, or what Hebrew, chapter 13, chapter 13, you will, you will perfect us in good work. Because to be living, everybody say to be living, is to be good. When the man is living, it's good. Because they, they, they call it's a good land. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good land. But it's not just a good land. It's also a land what that can heat its inhabitants. It's a good land. It's a good land. And it's only with milk and honey. For the land I give it to you is a good land. Or it's a living land. But God doesn't want it to be, but, but beyond that, God wants us to be perfected. To be perfected is to abide. Give me from verse 20, sir. Hebrew 13, 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, 
through the blood. You know, Pastor TJ was talking about the earth must be washed. That, that blood is, is reagents. That, that's how they perfect a man. And that, that blood is also flesh and blood. Corn and wine. Or living and abiding. So, yeah, what brings for abiding is the blood of the everlasting covenant, which is the wine. The great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of everlasting covenant. So, the, the, the blood of everlasting covenant is the abiding substances that must be given to the soul, or that must work on the soul. To give a soul that when you have assessed the good land, you are not just living it, but you can abide. Nothing can move you out of it. The same thing was what Paul was teaching, sir, in Romans 8. What shall separate us from the love of God? What shall separate us? What can take you off the love of God? To be separated from the love of God is to die. Because you're supposed to keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of God unto now. So the love of God is the realm of incorruptible abiding seed. Keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of Jesus that deliver eternal life. Oh, so, so the love of God, yeah, is the abiding. Because now abide their faith, hope, and charity or love. Say, so what shall separate us? So, a man can be in love of God, but can be, he can be separated from the love of God. What shall separate from the love of God? So, all those that we're talking about shall, shall angels. Give, give, give it to us as we close with that this afternoon. Let's start from for God who spared not his son. He that spared not his own son. So we know that his son there that he's talking about there is the giver of everlasting life. He who spared not his son but deliver him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us? They must say freely give us all things. So this freely give us all things, that is 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Yea, the spirit. For no man know the things of a man except the spirit of a man. Like I know the things of God except the spirit. Yea, the Holy Ghost, teach your things. Yea, the things that are freely given to us. Yea, the, the things of God. So the things that are freely given to us, we call it the things of God. So compared with that Romans 8, 32, that he that spare not his own son, but deliver him all for us, how shall he not with him also? Say with him also. I can't hear you, Richard. So he's not just giving us things. He's giving, so when he's giving us, he's giving him himself. With him. He's not just giving you things. Jesus, the son don't just give you things. God don't just give you things. When he's giving, he's giving you the son. Isaiah, unto us a child is born. Unto us the son is given. So he gives you the son when he's giving you his things. His things. Together with him. Because he's giving you a nature. He gives you the law. He gives you his life. He's giving you the life that is in the son. He that spare not his own son, but deliver all for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? With him also freely give us all things. Then verse 33, thank you. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? That means a man that God has elected, that is fulfilling God's election and calling of him. It is God that justified. Who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather that is risen again. Who is it at the right hand of God? Who also make it intersection for us? Who shall separate, what shall separate us from the love of God? What shall separate us? What things that separate us are things that don't make, don't make us to abide. 
We are separated from life of God when we cannot abide, when we cannot remain, because we don't have the seed that can make us remain. What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Because I've thought before that this is the love, this is the love, this love of Christ is not charity. It's really love of the Father, love of Christ. Shall I tribulation? Or distress. <laughs> no, Tuesday. I say when you use the word this, I thought it's stressed. Stressed can separate you. This is given by so much. Stressed. Is distressed. Say, I'm stressed. I can't continue everlasting life again. That was distressed. All persecution. Persecution came because of the seed of the word in Matthew 11. Persecution came because of the seed of the word. Or famine. Or nakedness. Or perilous. Or peri. Or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are key all day long. We are counted as sheep to the slaughter. No, in all these things, we are more than conqueror. Everybody say, we are more than conqueror. <laughs> I want us to be resolved. I want to trust God for grace for to have resolve in our heart that we are going to abide. We are going to keep this inheritance and abide. And it don't have a lasting life will open unto us. We are more than conquered through him that loved us. For I'm persuaded thy neither death. This death is not, it's not killing you. Death is a gift offer. What kill Adam and Eve were what they hate. So what kill is fruits. A show, but not apple. Neither death. So that day, what they call about, there's what Satan package that death. But what Satan package death, it comes as a gift. Just as life, just as the free gift, also free gift of God came as righteousness. God wanted to give gift, but God gave his gift for righteousness. So Satan also can package death as a gift, as offering. But we use it to tempt you as a kingdom, as a glory to you. So that you can live, you can be separated from the love of God. Angels! When I say angels here, yeah, I think we need to wait for God someone to come and teach it. Angel that can separate a man from the love of God, sir. <laughs> I don't know the kind of angel like that. You no know, principalities. Principalities are wisdom. Powers. Not things present. Even there are things to come. Can also say, come make a man not to abide. For I am persuaded that no height, no death, no any creature shall be able. Everybody say, shall be able. They didn't say we be able or may not be able. We are going to come with a play where it shall be said, shall be able. Oh, 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 oh. I was praying for you. Amen. I'm praying for you. I said you come to bed where they shall not be able. Amen. They said, no, shall be able. I love that. You know, you know when Bible, when they write Bible, Bible is not a subjective manual. They said there is a state, Pastor Moses said, that we're going to get there. We shall not be separate. That means what is keeping us, we are already abiding. We are being kept in the love of God. Then we can look for the mercy of eternal life because we are already an abider. To abide is to be in the love of God. When a man are finally himself in the love of God, not that love of God means you have be received the seal of the Father on your forehead. It's a love seal. It's, you have been sealed. Hot not the heads. They cannot, you can't longer be hot, sir. Nothing can hurt you anymore. You can't be hot because you have been kept in the love of God while looking for the mercy of Jesus unto eternal life. Let us begin to respond this afternoon to the Lord. This is our calling. Provision of God is available for a people. The Lord wants to bring us into this experience where we can abide. We are not just good. 
We are not just living, but the seed remaineth in us. Anemane shabrenonata salia de brosia. Ayalama, please put some labor. Just two minutes, two minutes. Let's pray, let's make transaction. Let's make transaction. God, I don't just want to be good. I want to be made perfect by the blood of everlasting covenants. I don't want to be separated from the love of God. I want to be kept. I want to be kept. I want to be kept in the love of God. I want to abide in the love of God. I want to abide. I want to abide. I want to abide. I want to remain. I will dwell in the land of the living. I will be a pillar. I shall no more go out. 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 For I will write upon him the name of my father and the name of the city of my God. Even the new Jerusalem. Jesus, him Messiah, Him Messiah, Him Messiah, Messiah, even your Messiah, even your Messiah, even your Messiah, the Savior, the Savior, your Messiah, your Messiah is of power, your Messiah is of power, your Messiah is of power to raise many, to, 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 to raise many, to raise many, to keep many many to keep many for the messiah has been raised as a merciful high priest to administer things of mercy to administer things of mercy merciful strength merciful strength to administer merciful strength to the weaker to administer merciful strength even the covenant of strength even the covenant of mercy the covenant of mercy to administer to many and this Messiah, even this Messiah that have conquered death, even the abide the Messiah, even the abide the Messiah, we keep many, he will raise many, 
He will raise many. He will raise many by the ministry of mercy. For many shall be raised. Uh, even many among you shall be raised uh, to be abiding sons. Uh, abiding sons. Uh, even pillars in the temple. Even pillars in the temple of our God. Uh, that we go no more out. For many shall be raised. Uh, for Messiah is of power. For Messiah is also of power. For he has been raised to raise many. And you will be raised. Uh, you will be raised. Uh, Messiah, Messiah is a merciful God. Messiah is a merciful high priest. He will keep many. He will raise many. And we make many to abide. See the Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just lift our hands and just thank Him for this word of.